the only ladies of the household, I hope, I presume. There's no one else, Your Grace. Your Grace! Your Grace! Please, wait! Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering another Disney classic film, Cinderella. The story has been retold hundreds of thousands of times throughout the decades. Yes. In every country around the world. But this Walt Disney classic is without a doubt the most famous and beloved version of all. But well, before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and keep watching some future podcasts and all the pause videos. Thank you for joining us, subscribing, sharing our videos, and commenting. We appreciate you so much. So Cinderella was actually released in 1950. It's wow. a musical fantasy film mm -hmm. and was directed by three different people, written by nine different people, mm -hmm. based on Cinderella by Charles Perrault. Right. And the music was done by two different people as well. It had a runtime of 76 minutes. The budget was two point two million dollars, mm -hmm. and it earned one hundred and eighty-two million dollars at the box office. <laughs> Another really payoff. Knew how to do it right. right, right. And one thing we do notice a lot of these classics, especially when it's in the nineteen hundred type decades, is that Disney usually adapted to what was going on at the time. They would do one formula that would work for a while, and if it looked like times were changing, people wanted something different or society and the world was different and these types of movies weren't being made or why anymore, then they would find ways to have it still be relatable to the audience, still be entertaining, still be enjoyable because there's a huge, actually a difference between this movie and Snow White and it's a 20 year difference. And you can see, especially the protagonist acts a little differently from when you had the much earlier film. They still do the fairy tale movie still, but you can tell there's a lot more to the characters now as these movies go forward. Now, during the 40s, Walt Disney Productions suffered financially after losing connections to the European film market during the outbreak of World War II. Right. So this was a really important film for Disney because by 1947, the studio was over $4 million in debt and on the verge of bankruptcy. Cinderella was released on February 15th of 1950 mm -hmm. and it received critical acclaim making it a box office success, yes. making it Disney's biggest hit since Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs hey, back in 1937, go. yes, and reversed their fortune. So, wow. Yes, and we do see that they really excelled at doing fairy tale stories. And even when you get to now, there's still so many stories they haven't done that are fairy tales in different countries, which they actually started to do much later. These kind of just tackle the fairy tales that were classics you already knew very well and it came more popular thanks to these movies and with Cinderella this is pretty much the movie everyone goes to when they think about a classic Cinderella movie there's been so many dang versions and swaps and ages and things modern day all animal it's a live male action, live action and, right a, a male is Cinderella instead of female they Cinderella. Done, right they've done just about every version out there and several really the successful one is the one from Amazon Prime but that's another story <laughs> so this film was followed by two direct video sequels Cinderella 2 Dreams Come True in 2002 yeah and Cinderella 3 a twist in time in 2007 as well as a live action remake in 2015 that was a hit as well yes so 1950 to 2002 the big gap when Disney decided to go back to this story and use it to create another movie right that's a long time right so that shows you the durability of this story but didn't know that it was a French story no didn't know that at all so, if you know the classic story, and we know you do, Cinderella's dad remarried after his wife passed away, mm -hmm. and as Rascal said, he married into money, because they kept saying, why did he marry her? She said, money, monies. Yeah. And then, <laughs> after he passed away, thinking he was setting up a nice home for his daughter, well, this witch showed her spots, her stripes, and zigzags, and everything, everything else she had. <laughs> and she became this horrible ogre along with her two hideous daughters. And it's you like, cannot say anything because Disney definitely created and designed them so you would think nothing but hideous. <laughs> because of 
their personalities and their behavior and their looks and how the mom was, they were pretty much imitating her. Right. So the apple didn't fall far from the tree on this right. one. They couldn't be anything but idiots. Right. Like, and then true. when we learned about the two DVD sequels, I do remember that at one point, they, the third one actually ended up being the most popular one next to the original. We couldn't believe it. And ironically enough, they actually made it work where even one of the sisters ended up reforming and apologizing to Cinderella. And this was like decades <laughs> later. It's like, wow, you still even managed to keep in tune with the story without right. going way off the rails like a lot of these films do now. So yet again, even with these additional stories to something that only had one story... They still manage to keep that same vibe and magic this film had in the 50s all the way to the 2000s. It's beautifully animated, especially high tech during the time that it came out. Right, with animation. Disney was continuing to do things no other studio was doing. Beautiful to look at, and you feel with Cinderella through the story. We rewatched it for this podcast. Yeah. And I never realized how much you empathize with her. Why? Especially with the controversies people came up with. He controlled and pulled your strings from the beginning to the end of the movie. And you were wanting her to win. You didn't mind the little critters who were her friends. Right. And he didn't make them talk except when they spoke to each other. Right. She was hearing gibberish. When they spoke to each other, you could understand, which was really clever during that time. Right. And you could see Cinderella being heartbroken and giving up. Time and time again, the stepmom was a witch, and she yeah. had to be like Sleeping Beauty's stepmom, right. or Snow White's. She was her own brand of witch. Exactly. I mean, and, really. And we actually, it was actually great that we even uh, watching these classics like this, because when we started watching a lot of the latter movies, we noticed the villains for Disney started being trauma, generational trauma, plot twist. Oh, this person wasn't really a villain. It was just by circumstance became a villain. Or, oh, the person reformed by the end, and they still haven't had one of those classic villains. And here, so far, three we've seen in a row of Disney classics have been female villains. Whether they were with power or they were regular people with a different kind of power. Like this one. So I would love to say that this movie really is an example of how things can go wrong in our lives and how through faith and not giving up hope and mm -hmm. pressing forward, even if you fall down mm -hmm. and you have to get back up, even if you collapse and cry and fall apart, you have to start over again, that we can make it. Right. I know some of you are going to go about fairy, magic fairy godmother, where I think she represents faith. And I think it was not only yeah, Cinderella's it. Yeah. Thing, it was also her little friends. Right. Because they weren't going to give up on her, helping her, getting her to the ball, and never getting the hell out of that house. <laughs> no matter what they had to do, they weren't going to give up. And if you watch that, you can apply it to your own life again. Everyone has these type of events in their lives that happen, but you have to get up and keep going and press on. Will you reach your Prince Charming? I don't know, but I'm sure you'll come out with an ending that is happy for you as long as you persevere. Right. It's not a story that I, some people might think, well, it's kind of campy or it's... Or they might feel it's outdated for them. Right. Or a fairy tale. But you can apply it to your own experience and use it for inspiration, which is what Walt Disney always was striving for with any movie he made. Right. And one of the things that are being hilarious is that with the focus on the little animals and how different the animals are kind of different now in the Disney films. The biggest thing about we took away besides like, the critters helping Cinderella in the morning, just how many times they've had the animals help the princesses in the morning. It's absolutely hilarious. Instead of the butlers or anything, it's the animals. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. And then the other thing was I just kept go on the floor because when we saw the cat with Lucifer yes. it was hilarious because you saw how pompous he was and clearly spoiled because he was a very big kitty and all I could think was oh gosh this is where Charles was being inspired from only yes. they Charles made him look lovable. the opposite yeah beautiful oh, and lovable oh, and he liked his sassiness right it just made him look the opposite of that he had sass <laughs> so one quick fun fact and then we'll go over the boy cast quickly in 
2018, this film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, and as, or aesthetically significant. Wow. And I think it was all three. Testament to the movie making during that time. Mm -hmm. So let's go over the voice cast quickly. Eileen Woods is Cinderella. Eleanor Audley is Lady Tremaine. Cinderella's cruel and conniving stepmama. <laughs> Verna Felton is Fairy Godmother. Rhoda Williams and Lucille Bliss as Drizella and Anastasia Tremaine, the Wicked Stepsisters, and they were wicked. You're right. James McDonald as Jacques, Jacques and Gus, Cinderella's loyal and helpful mice. Louis Van Ruten as the king. William Edward Phipps as Prince Charming, who falls in love, of course, immediately like an anime. Right. <laughs> Cinderella. And Mike Douglas provided the uncredited singing voice for Prince Charming. Oh, okay. Marion Darlington was uncredited as Cinderella's bird friends. And June Foray, the great June Foray, was uncredited as Lucifer. Oh my gosh, isn't that ironic? She's playing the cat. And believe it or not, the uncredited narrator in the prologue was Betty Lou Gerson. What? Did not know that at all. So, there were quite a few people additionally who did background voices that were uncredited. So we just love to give a shout out to voice actors no matter what time period. So this was a movie that we really enjoyed watching again. And, and as I mentioned earlier, didn't realize how much you were just drawn through this movie and your strings were pulled and you got upset when you were supposed to get upset. You were empathetic when you were supposed to be empathetic. You wanted to kick Lucifer when you wanted to kick Lucifer. <laughs> times it was magically orchestrated for the audience to enjoy yeah and this is just another example of Walt Disney and how he strived to bring excellence to every movie and how unfortunately the studio has changed mm -hmm. but I'm really grateful that we still have the opportunity to watch these whether you get them from your library you purchase them or see them streaming on Disney Plus it's just a joy being able to watch them still. Right. So if you've seen Cinderella, either this one or the two succeeding movies, let us know in the comments. And if you haven't, watch it. What are you waiting for? It's really fun and a testament to the magnificence of Walt Disney Studios. Yeah. From Absolutely. the time of its inception up into the last two. Yes. <laughs> and if you haven't already, subscribe for updates and weekly videos for your anime series and make sure you look all things animation. Absolutely. Thanks so much for watching us again and joining us for our Disney Plus this week. We mm -hmm. have more fun for you in a particular podcast this week, so stay tuned. Yes. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Ask Entertainment. And I'm Monica Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Yes. Peace. And always remember, you are special. Cinderella Special Edition. For the first time ever on Disney DVD, October 4th, 2005. <laughs>